making this kind of this big X. And we're going to start on the left side of the body. What we're going to play with is bringing the elbow and the knee towards one another, keeping the hand and the foot on the floor, but the elbow and the knee don't have to stay on the floor. And as that, we bring the elbow and knee together, feel how the crown of the head and the tail go to the left as well. And so we're in this big, you know, this very subtle kind of C shape. and then reach the leg and arm along. We're just gonna do that a couple more times on the left side. So bring the elbow and knee towards one another. They don't need to stay on the floor. Let the head and the tail follow the elbow and knee as they want to. Picture in your mind's eye, the spine doing this lateral flexion, this ever so slightly lateral flexion and a bit of rotation. And then they're gonna reach out long. And then we're going to salamander one more time. And then we're going to take the right hand and foot and have them stay on the floor and come around to the left. And you feel that roll this right on our left hand side. Then we're going to take the hand and foot and reach them away from one another and to the right. And how that rolls us back on our back. Then we're going to un reach the elbow and knee away from one another. We're going to do that two more times. So elbow knee, salamander spine here, and then tracing on the floor to bring yourself around onto that left hand side. Right hand and foot move away from one another to the right and feel how that unfurls you. And then as you reach the elbow and knee away from each other, you come back to straight. One last time, feel each phase of that movement. Feel the shapes that the movement creates. Feel as much contact with the floor as you can. And then just pause there and notice what you notice. Okay, and then we're going to go through on the other side. So bringing the right elbow and knee towards one another and away from one another. And again, as the elbow and knee move, just notice how the spine moves. Notice what the head wants to do. Feel for how you feel the tailbone move in space. One more time, they're going to reach together. Keeping the, the foot and the hand on the floor, but the elbow and the knee don't need to stay on the floor. Reach them out. One more time, they're gonna to reach towards one another. Feel that side bend in the spine, that little bit of rotation. And the left hand and foot are gonna stay on the floor, tracing this arc around, bringing you on to your right hand side. Take a second here to Feel yourself on your left hand side. Sorry, on your right hand side. And then you're going to take the left hand and foot and take them to the left and away from one another. And then reach the elbow and knee away from one another. We're going to do that two more times. Reaching that left hand and foot away from one another and to the left. Pause there. Elbow and knee move away from one another. Big, tall star. One more time. Salamander to the right. Elbow and knee towards one another. Circle the left hand and foot remaining on the floor to the right. And then reaching them to the left. And just pause there and notice what you notice. Yeah, there's just a whole lot more of me on the floor. Okay. So we're going to come and be in that big X. Okay, and what you're going to play with is we're going to bring the right hand off the ground. That right hand is going to reach across and towards the left. The head is going to follow it. Keep reaching that left arm long. See how from here to when this keeps reaching, I roll 
to the outside edge of that left arm. So I'm on the pinky side of it as I keep reaching the right fingertips towards my left toes. And then I'm gonna slide back and back. And I'm gonna do that again. Right hand up, I'm gonna follow it with my gaze. I'm gonna keep reaching, reaching, reaching. The arms reaching away from one another as I come towards my left foot. And then we're going to lift up the left arm, reach it, reach it, reach it, come towards the right foot. Reach back, unroll. One more time, left arm up, reach it, reach it, reach it. So it might surprise you how easy this is as you use that reach and that tensioning through the shoulder girdle to kind of start to initiate the trunk and all the way up. We're going to go from the right foot with that left hand, left hand comes to the left foot, right hand comes up and forward, left hand reaches back, takes us down. Okay, right hand's going to come up, it's going to reach, we're going to go to the left foot with the right hand. Right hand to the right foot, left hand to the right foot. Bring yourself back down. Left hand reaches to the right foot. Left hand goes to the left foot. Right hand goes to the left foot. Left hand reaches back and lowers us down. Right hand comes up, it reaches to the left foot. It goes to the right foot, left hand to the right foot, sliding down on that right arm. One more time, left hand reaches to the right foot. It goes to the left foot, right hand goes to the left foot. I lower myself down. And just pause there and notice what you notice. Notice the shoulders, notice the arms. My arms actually feel like they're a part of the same body now, which is cool. Notice what you notice. We're gonna come on up and onto, um, onto our bellies. So this is going to be a bit of a stretch and opener from for the front of the opposite shoulder. And so just take care, you decide and play with the angle of that arm to get the line of kind of tensioning through the front of the shoulder that works for you. So we're going to come down onto the belly. And again, those arms are up in that X shape. Okay, from here, my forehead, uh, I'm actually, I'm going to look to the right. I'm going to lift my left foot off the floor, or sorry, I'm going to look to the left. So I'm looking towards my left elbow. I've lifted my right foot off the floor, so the right sole of my foot is towards the ceiling. Then I'm going to lift the right knee and start to rotate and take that knee kind of out and away from the body. And I'm going to let that right hand come to be a bit of a kickstand. So I start to come towards the floor with that right foot. And then you'll start to see what I mean about that stretch through the left arm line. I'm just going to roll back to the belly. And then over again. Playing with kind of where your hand is, the rotation of your forearm the rotation of your upper arm. You know, more external rotation is going to get you out of the pecs. Um, being a little bit more 
internally rotated and going is going to get you more kind of front of the shoulder stretch. So you decide how much or how little you want. So then you're going to put the arms out at the side, looking to the left. And this time as I take that right foot, I'm going to try to keep my right palm on the floor and reach that right leg across. And that's going to get into the front of that right shoulder. So again, I might want to keep the palm down. I might want to connect to the fingertip pads. I might want to play with that where that hand is. Play with bending the elbow. Just noticing that line of connection from the right hand to the right foot. And then just pause there for a second before we go to the other side. That right arm is out to the side. Left hand is just by the chest. Now lift the left foot off the floor, left sole of the foot to the ceiling, lifting that left knee, rotating that leg and pelvis. And I'm using that left hand as a bit of a kickstand to help me get over to the right. And I'm gonna play with that right arm, taking my breastbone away from the floor in this instance. Play with looking down towards your feet. Once you go, now you're going to keep the left palm on the ground and start to rotate around, keeping the breastbone towards the floor and trying to kind of grab the floor with the fingertips and gather it up. And then you'll get into the front of that shoulder. And I'm just going to, I'm going to push down into the pinky side of that left hand as I try to kind of gather the floor and that's going to put some different input into the front of that left shoulder. And then just pause, notice what you notice there. And then on that left side, take your, um, right cheek onto the back of your right hand and then you're going to slide up your left leg so wherever you can comfortably get that knee out to the side of the body again think like we're in the center of a clock so when I'm laying long my feet are at six so my head is at 12 on that clock now I want to bring that left knee out somewhere between six and nine, okay? And your pelvis might not stay on the floor, that's okay. So from here, we're gonna take um, and just breathe a little bit. I might rotate my head to bring my left cheek to the back of my right hand. I guess it's my temple more. I might reach that arm out long with the front of the ceiling. And I'm gonna take the leg and straighten it inside edge of the heel and the mound of the big toe. Ah, yeah, yeah. You might get some crampiness. Okay. From there, I'm going to point my toes and roll on to the top of the thigh. So the knee goes towards the floor here. And then I'm going to come back onto the inside edge of that foot the inside edge of the leg 
Again, I'm going to point the toe and rotate onto the top of the thigh. And then I'm going to connect to the inside edge of the heel and the big toe mound. Think about reaching through that heel, stretching out long through the right leg, out long through that left heel. And I'm going to point, plant or flex that left ankle and roll onto the top of the thigh, knee towards the ground. And I'm going to come back onto the inside edge of that foot and I'm going to bend the knee. You might find you can reposition the leg now that we've done some of that. There's some more space. You can move to another position on that clock face. From here, we're going to roll over the top of that knee, bringing the sole of the foot, that left foot, to the ceiling. And then we're going to lower it back down. And then we're going to lift that outside edge of the foot and bring the sole towards the ceiling and then lower it back down. One more here. You might get a little crampy crampy in that hip. You might not be able to lift the foot very far off the floor. That's okay. Straighten that leg back out. And just notice what you notice here. So I feel like that um, left leg is longer and like more of the front of that left side of the pelvis is in contact with the floor. Okay, I'm going to slide their leg out. My right knee out to about three o'clock, between three and six o'clock on that clock face. And then from here, I'm just going to take a few breaths. Feel myself on the inside edge of that right foot. Maybe I play a little bit with peeling the outside edge of that right foot up towards my head or my knee. And then I'm going to straighten that right leg. Feeling the inside edge on the floor and maybe look at that foot and notice like is that outside edge pulled towards your hip Can you reach it away if it is can you reach long through that foot in the tripod of the foot as if it was connecting into the ground okay so that there's not more weight on the big toe mound and there's not more weight on the inside edge of the heel but you feel that whole outer seam of your foot and you're reaching the heel long again that right side of the pelvis may or may not come to the floor depending on your um the the you know resting tension in your hips from here we're going to plant our flex that foot and then roll onto the top of that thigh so the heel rolls towards the ceiling the knee rolls towards the floor you might feel some work and some like cramp crampiness and then come back to the outside edge of that foot and imagine that foot standing firm on a wall or the floor tripod of the foot so mount of the heel the big toe and the pinky and then you're going to plant our flex roll the heel towards the ceiling the knee towards the floor dorsiflex can connect through the outside edge of that foot one more time roll dorsiflex okay let's bend that knee and then we're going to roll onto the top of the knee bring the sole of that foot towards the ceiling notice as you bring the sole of the foot towards the ceiling can the shin remain perpendicular to the floor or as you lift the foot does the heel come towards your pelvis or fall away from your pelvis so try to keep the heel in line with the knee and think of that shin being perpendicular to the floor. And again, you could rotate your head to the left. One more time. Don't worry how high you lift the foot or not. Lower it down and let's straighten that leg.
Okay, I'm gonna invite you to bring the elbows underneath the shoulders, palms on the floor. So I'm gonna turn my mat sideways. We're gonna finish with one more kind of rolling thing. And we're gonna start in a sphinx pose. Okay, from here, I'm going to lift that sole of the foot, I'm gonna reach it over and come all the way up to sitting. So I'm gonna slide myself back down, roll myself back into that sphinx, and I'm gonna to go to the other side. So just starting to play with some ways that I can move from the floor to start to get up, right? So from here, I might press into that right foot, swing my left foot underneath, and then I'm up. And then I can come down, swing that leg out, reach myself down, come back into Sphinx. Reaching it over, coming up, pressing into that hand, sliding that leg under, coming up, and taking it back out, reaching it down, rolling into Sphinx, okay? Come back on your back. One more body scan here. Before we settle in for Shavasana. So just coming onto your back, just notice the grass that this body would lay down. Where the grass would remain standing up or semi-standing up underneath this body. Just notice what you notice. Thank you.